of the show. It is before the game. Please keep your hands together for our next special guest from the Carlton Footy Club, Mr. Kate Simpson, everybody. Dirty, rotten, rotten, miserable night it was for the team, and we'll get past that quickly. But congratulations on the 100. I mean, it was a significant milestone for you last night. Um, been a tough journey, the 100 games you've played so far. It's been a, a pretty grim yeah. period for the footy club. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, first couple of years I got down there, there wasn't too many wins. And um, this year we've had a few more. But, um, yeah, last night, very disappointing. But you were a self-made man. You weren't a high draft pick, were you? What, coming in at 40? Nah, or... Yeah, 45. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but you you were a great player for Carlton. And uh, we're all shattered <laughs> like, that the team couldn't do it for <laughs> you last night. Did you? I actually left before you got off the ground. Um, <laughs> what? What? No, well, I, what? I missed the end of the game. You walked out of the place before the final siren. <laughs> yes. That's un Australian. Well, I think most Carlton supporters had left by then. <laughs> did, you, did they carry you off? No, 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 not, no, for, not for 100. No. Does that deject you when you see the fans walking out? You're on the ground, you see these people leaving you? Oh, I sort of wanted to find somewhere to hide as well out there. <laughs> a, bit, a bit disappointing, so yeah. Kate, it was a return to the dark old days and your heaviest loss for the year and since round 22. Where did it come from? It, it was it was woeful. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure really. We, uh, we had a good build-up to the game. Um, we sort of spoke about it all week, what they were going to do, and we sort of tried to put a plan in place to stop that, but it just uh, just all unfolded after half-time, and I can't really um, describe what happened. Uh, so what? tell us a bit about you know the build-up and then what's happened since. You know, was The coach said in his post-match that it was embarrassing. Was he scathing on you straight away? How does, how does Brett go about dealing with that kind of result? Um, no, we just went through all the stats, and I think our skills last night were just terrible and um, their pressure was good which probably caused a lot of that but um, we overused the ball, too many handballs, not enough kicks, um, going forward we couldn't hit targets so it was probably our fault that we uh, lost and yeah as you said we've been so competitive all year yeah, and then to have a blowout right. like that was just yeah real disappointing. Did he give a good spray though because Rats looks like he can go when he goes, did he go? Um, no he was pretty calm, he sort of, as I said he went through the stats. And uh, just... I reckon I should have given the <laughs> If it happens again, you can come down, maybe. <laughs> Wonder you couldn't hear me from walking along the yard. <laughs> As we spoke to Andrew before in the last segment about the by-play, and I'm sure you won't tell us the whole story, but the feeling was that the Blues were pretty upset with some of the comments that came out of Essendon's camp when they beat you in round three. Matthew Lloyd last night has kind of added to the catalogue, I guess, of comments of this nature. Let's have a listen. No, we felt like there was a lot, fair bit of tension from their camp in regards to um, the way they felt we reacted the last time. What's he talking about there? Now, they spoke about that they felt like they could run, run you over in, in the ends of games. Did it really get up your nose and how much was made of that during the week? Um, not really. The way we've played the past couple of times against them, it's probably um, it's proven that they can outrun us over the past three or four times. So, yeah, well, that, that's his opinion. Um, yeah, hopefully it's, we can get them next year. Tell you what, you can mock us twice, but third time, <laughs> we're going to get them. Right? You play a selfless brand of footy individually, and you always seem to put team before your own pursuits as a play. But one, if there's a, one of the criticisms about some of the Carlton players might be that they don't. And Satana last night was on fire, and he's coming back with a footy here, and Fev, the commentary, said, could have seen, you know, been the, the, the eyes in the back of Satanta's head here and called him back. And let him take that mark. Do you, is it a fair criticism that there aren't enough players at the Carlton Footy Club who are playing for the team, who put the team, you know, ahead of their own individual pursuits? Oh, I'm not sure about that. I think all um, all players there. You're in the you play football for a team game, and you yeah. want team um, success. So that's why you play AFL and. I think most of the boys are out there to uh, get that. The culture of winning, Sam and I were sort of talking about it today, it's coming, and Jared Waite was talking about this uh, on the radio before the game last night. Is it there, do you actually believe the big games when you get to play, and you're going to be playing a whole lot more because there is expectation, do you feel comfortable going into these massive games now that, yeah, we are at that level now, we are competitive and we are going to win this game of footy? Is that, is that there yet, do you reckon? Yeah, I think uh, this year we've proven against I think, Hawthorne and St Kilda where we... We have stood up in the bigger games and we've probably lost the ones that we've been favoured mm. in to go in like Fremantle and that. Everyone expects us to win those ones and we've fallen down in those ones. So we should ne- Carlin should never be favourite in a game, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Just ban them being favourites. 
<laughs> and Eddie, I think it's a bit harsh, though. It's a bit harsh to have a go at Fev, because Fev did have the perfect preparation this week. How's and so? the perfect preparation is to release a children's book, um, <laughs> which is what <laughs> Fev did early this week. And it's a great book, too. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, we've got a copy of the book here. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mr. Suki by Brendan Favola. What's that? You want me to read from it? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Suki by Brendan Favola. Mr. Suki goes for a mark and isn't paid. <laughs> Mr. Suki <Sookie> gives up. <laughs> the end. So there we go. Uh, Quite the contribution, but in all seriousness, Feb has released two books. Oh, he is a mighty sucker he has, coming out. I'm going to give him a suck up now because he does deserve it. He's released this one, the best game ever. I should point out, Mr. Sookie is also sometimes known as Mr. Punchy. <laughs> Let's hope I don't find that out. Uh, so that's the best game ever. And also this book here tells you a little bit about the AFL and you can keep a record of your own playing career in a little diary in there as well. Both fantastic books, both available July 3rd. So good on you, Fev, for releasing those two books. Sorry we about that one, Mr. Punch. We have to take a break. Kate seems to going to stick around. Will we come back? Oh, cool. Oh, boy. Welcome back to the show. Hawthorne arriving in Subiaco for their game against West Coast. You'll see that everywhere around Australia except for Adelaide. Cade Simpson, our special guest in the studio. It'll be 100 kilometre an hour winds are forecast for Subiaco. <laughs> That's fair It's oh, like yeah. a Category 4 or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine kicking into that. No, Good that Lord. would be very hard Make work. compelling television. It might be I, I think Cade Simpson Stay plays tuned. footy at 100 Kilometres an hour. You go <laughs> flat out. No, I think a lot of Carlton's, other Carlton players could take your attitude on. Because you don't weigh much. How much do you weigh? Um, 75. 75 kilos? I'm 90. You know? <laughs> if I was against you, you would steamroll me. <laughs> Kate, how much have you learnt? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> how much have you learnt from training and playing alongside Chris Judd? Uh, yeah, everyone knows he's an absolute superstar. The way he goes about his footy, just his preparation the way he gets his uh, body right and uh, all the work he does at the club and also away from the club is just outstanding. I know a lot of the young guys look up to him. We, we mentioned earlier it was your 100th game. To honour the occasion, they let you toss the coin. Uh, exciting moment for you, was it? Uh, Dubious yeah. on it. Didn't get any sleep last night? <laughs> no, I was all right. Oh, you see, the reason I ask is because we get very excited about it down at Tigerland. Have a look at, have a look at this, because uh, we don't have much to celebrate. Have a look at how excited this guy gets. Tosses the coin, wins it. Yeah! <laughs> he did a lap of honour after that. <laughs> Not much to get excited about down at Tigerland. Now it's time for a segment that's actually tossing the coin tonight at the Hawthorne West Coast game. It's the Home Hardware. <laughs> The Essendon coach, Matthew Knight, is obviously flying high. His team's flying, yeah. He's a, he's a genius. He's an absolute genius coach. But he does not that's not where his talents lie. Uh, he's even got more talent than that. <laughs> really? The man is also a medical genius. Really? He was asked about uh, Joe Watson last night, the injury he sustained, uh, okay. and have a look at his answer. He couldn't feel the bottom half of his leg, and um, so that was a sure sign to me that we didn't want to put him back out there. <laughs> to wheel him back on the field. You're a regular Dr House, aren't you? Anyway, you win the exceed angle grinder from home hardware, your proper hardware store. Good luck next week. Uh, even better luck in your next 100 games. Let's hope there's some towering achievements in there. Kate Simpson, our special guest on the program. Stick around, plenty more to come on the show.